Welcome to the NAMI New Jersey webinar series. We are very honored to have today's distinguished speaker with us today. During these difficult times, we can still focus on our wellness. Many of us are staying at home following the guidelines to reduce the spread of the coronavirus, but we are feeling challenged physically, financially, and emotionally. Some of us are feeling socially isolated, disrupted in our usual habits and routines, and the interruptions to our occupational and intellectual wellness. This session will highlight what and how we can focus our wellness dimensions to build our resilience, give us tools and strategies um, to help us do that. Today's webinar is called Wellness Strategies for Managing Crisis, and our speaker is Peggy Swarbrick. We are thrilled to have you here, Peggy. Thank you so much for doing this. Um, Peggy Swarbrick works with the Collaborative Support Programs of New Jersey. The Wellness Institute, she's the Wellness Institute Director. She's also the Associate Professor and Director of Practice Innovation and Wellness from Rutgers University Behavioral Healthcare. Peggy has published and lectured on wellness and health promotion models, peer-led services, including housing supports, employment, and recovery. Her work has focused on strength-based interventions to promote recovery for mental health and substance abuse conditions. Many of Peggy's practice innovation and research activities, such as developing the eight dimensions, the eight dimensional model of wellness, attempt to address health disparities facing people served by the public mental health system. She is well known for collaborating with the peer community in family groups to identify and address social determinants that present barriers to recovery, such as homelessness, poverty, and under and unemployment. She has created promotional initiatives and created wellness self-care programs for caregivers, families, and youth. She has made significant contributions to the body of literature in occupational therapy, behavioral, uh, behavioral health care, and psychiatric rehabilitation, including peer-reviewed peer journals, federal documents, and other widely circulated publications. And on a personal note, I have to say, with all of her background, she is one of the most open and humble people that we've ever worked with. So we are really thrilled to have you um, do this webinar with us, Peggy, and I will turn it over to you. Thank you so much. Now, thank you, Meredith, and thank you everyone for coming on on a, a day, you know, Wednesday, we could be out and about, and it's so wonderful to see everybody's interest in really learning more about how we can work together to help one another. So as Meredith mentioned, you know, we, um, this, this program is just going to really highlight the wellness strategies we can use during crisis. We're all faced with this together, and what I'd like to do is this model that I've developed that has served me well, served many people that I know for many years well, see how we can use this during this time. And I'm gonna focus a little bit around the model and some strategies, but I just thought um, as I was putting this together, I saw the two photos on the screen that we have a lot to learn from, cat, from cats during this time, because I kind of, a lot of people are like, wow, I'm in the house a long time. And they're talking about how their cats are used to doing that and what the cats do. I'm going to refer to the cats a few times along the way because I think some of the things that the cats do to adapt and adjust to being in a house all day, a lot of lessons. Last summer, I had the opportunity to take care of someone's cats for um, a number six weeks, and I learned a lot more about cats and how they're very satisfied being alone in the house and do they do take care of themselves in terms of self care. I also put the other sign here because though we're disrupted and we have challenges. This, um, this board here looks a little bit like my desk because it's a lot of things happening and there's a lot of to-do lists. So I think we can try to organize ourselves and kind of use this time to really um, think about what we can do and what we um, can do, particularly thinking about the wellness. And a lot of people say, well, how can I think about wellness during such a challenge? I just think about the way the model was developed for myself and for so many people, it was developed when we were in crisis or it's developed to help us get through the crisis. So wellness becomes an important frame and focus that we can continue to use for ourselves during this time and beyond this time to help us look at our strengths and the re existing resources we do have within our environments. Even though there's a lot of challenges, there's a lot that's there. The world is turned upside down. Our, in, our habits and routines have been really turned upside down. But yet, if we think about wellness, wellness being this conscious, deliberate process where I become aware of, being aware of, and I make choices for things I can do, we can try to think about what is 
possible in the day, in the moment. So what I'm going to try to do in this is try to think about how we can think about the lens, the keep the lens in mind. Maybe we're focusing a lot more on the physical domain a lot. That's what I find myself, and I'm really got that one in you know in clear focus. It's a way that we can think about becoming aware of on what's going well, what we can do, and what other things we can consider. And again, you guys coming on, learning from each other and support mechanisms, we can learn from each other. This idea of wellness in crisis has been really what, as I said, um, really has helped me in developing this. So I'm going to outline the ABCs of the model and then just kind of go over some of the things around some strategies that uh, people have been sharing with me and also things I've been sharing with myself, thinking through the eight dimensions. So again, the eight BCs of the model, thinking about how we can view wellness in this time. So there's the framework of the dimensions, but then there's the ABCs, thinking about our attitude, our beliefs, and what we have control. And this has really been the frame of the model. What are the attitude that I approach this situation from? And then again, related is what are the activities that I can do or adapt or adjust to manage this situation? And you're all doing, the fact that you got onto the computer and were able to be here today, there's a lot you're doing well that's keeping you moving forward, seeking new knowledge, seeking support, seeking to learn more all positive things that we want to congratulate ourselves do, showing up, getting up, all good things. The balance, and I'm going to talk a little bit about that, has been a little thrown off a lot. So how do we readjust the balance that works for us now, knowing that now this is challenged and probably for, you know, in a while, in the next maybe year, who knows, year and a half, we may still have some challenges we have to face. But if we can arm ourselves with tools and a, a strategies, and a, most important, the attitude, what do we think? Very, very important. And then the control and choice. So the ABCs. So with the um, attitude, it's the frame in which we view the world, right? Like how we're seeing this, like how do we look at things, um, the tone in which we hear, the mood for our day's activity. And again, what, what I always say is the most important thing you'll ever wear is your attitude. So every day we wake up and we have an attitude about things. And I have to find myself constantly reshifting my attitude recently, like especially a month ago, it was a real challenge in that area. And it's keeping that, focusing on that attitude. Related to attitude is the activity, is the things we do in our day to day. How do we approach those activities, those essential things? And those are things that we can be thinking about. So I'd like to see right away, if anyone wants to put in the chat box, what activity are you doing now for your wellness? What are you doing? We'd like to hear a little bit in the chat. So if you um, want to post in the uh, Q&A, the chat post, see what are you doing for your wellness right now? What's an activity or an activities you are doing right now? We've got people. So Peggy, we have working out, yoga, working from home, doing yoga, meditating, yoga, working from home. Yeah. Um, scrolling down, yoga, meditation, exercise, taking walks, um, walking dogs in the woods, yeah. art journaling, dog walks, walking, yoga, meditating, connecting with friends, exercising, playing a game on my phone, getting outside, doing puzzles, um, painting, um, virtual classes, eating well, gardening, um, using the wrap and mindfulness, going to the Walking at the mall parking lot, um, pra Pranam, I'm pr sorry, pronouncing that wrong, um, my, Mighty Facebook Live videos, Zoom events, knitting, taking up new hobbies, taking walks, long showers, I like that. Yeah. Currently cleaning out my cabinets, breathing exercises, having fun, Zumba, reading, um, games, cleaning closets wow. more veggies, cooking with the family, cooking dinner recipes with roommates reading books, watching one movie a day or a week, um, gardening, farming, creative activities, feeding our goats, um, exercising, even if it's just 10 minutes, that's very good. Um, taking walks, reading my Bible and staying connected with my church family. Wow. 
So we got a group that's hot and hot doing their wellness. That is so wonderful. Like that everyone is doing something right now. You're all doing these things. It's so wonderful to hear the diversity of things everyone's doing. And it's so important that, that you, that's what, that's what we do is we do things, we adapt. We may have been doing those things before. We're continuing them. We may have found opportunities now to do these things. That's a big piece of wellness. It's just getting up in that day and doing things. It's just so wonderful that more than half of the people I think have posted up there and there. So, so great to hear all these things. Um, so uh, related to the activity and what I'm going to talk a lot about in the dimension, some other activities that you know, building on what you've already said, but some other things, the idea of the ABC, so the attitude and activity, and then the balance. So we, so right now we restored our balance. We're restoring our balance because we have a balance. We have a balance that varies from each different, um, different times. I have just had to, I'm still working on rebalancing my um, sense of my day-to-day -day habits and routines. But the big piece we find for myself and for many people is the sleeping, the eating, the moving, the breathing, the social connection, those balances are real important ones to keep focusing on. And I love to hear the activities because many of those activities related to that, the, um, the moving, the food, um, breathing, being, doing stuff out in nature. So being able to adjust and adapt that. I like even for myself, it was the sleep. I'm finding myself sleeping a little longer than I needed to usually do. And I also am like trying to make sure I'm not, I mean, I am a workaholic, very much can self-confess, but I actually found myself more working and I'm sort of like starting to try to help that get that balance even more, even though I don't have a commute, I'm still working during that time and having a lot more time. So it's finding that balance for ourselves. The next thing, so it's A, B, C, it's easy to remember, is the control and choice. And this is one so important that a statement that I've used for many years in my life and continue, but it's really helping us to, um, know the things we cannot change, having the courage to change what we can and getting that sense of the wisdom to know the difference. We have to kind of learn that letting go and being able to know what we can control right now is us getting up, doing these activities that we all talked about and other activities that are so essential for our equilibrium balance. And what I'm gonna highlight a lot is building our immunity. Keep all those activities you talked about are so wonderful for your immune system. And that's a big protection right now is our immune system, keeping our immune system strong. And all of those things you did talked about that. But again, how we sense of control in our perception and using this um, statement that's like a mantra for many of us helps a lot too, so we don't get caught up. So it's the ABCs. And I really encourage you to think about them as we think about how we look at our wellness, the wellness being particularly the physical domains being so important. Many of the things many of you talked about, the other things I'm hearing a lot about from people is the medical care and screenings. That's being challenged for people. So if you have a medical condition or you're at risk or we don't even know if we have something, that's the thing we want to maybe be a more mindful of being able to kind of keep with those routines, but also keep those checkups going or finding a way to monitor symptoms if we have symptoms for medical and also mental health. So the wellness model, which we won't go into exact so much detail, I can spend hours on each of the dimensions and domains to try to help think about this, but I've kind of looked at a subset for today. Why we focus in on this, because you talked about it. you have these wellness habits that build other wellness habits. You all shared them, so it's wonderful you have them then it's building them. You have these strengths in different areas and you want to just keep focusing on it. It's so easy. Um, you know, a lot of times people's conversations today gets into some negativities and I'm really trying to watch that for myself, that I'm not doing it and that I'm not engaging in it because what I want to do is focus on my wellness and the wellness of other people around me. So what we focus on expands and focusing on our wellness, sharing the things like you shared today, and building new things or strengthening things you may have done is very important. Physical dimension is physical domain, really, really important, as I mentioned, just taking that um, focus. And um, these are areas that um, we think about, you know, um, the um, cat, what if the cat does a lot for their physical wellness, taking care of themselves. 
the cat does a lot of these things right here. I kind of think about the cat. They eat, you know, and they eat moderately. I know I was feeding this cat for six weeks. I put the food out and, you know, it's, they, they just, whatever I put out, that's what they ate. You know, didn't come until the next time they came back. We can modulate what we, what we are eating and we can eat healthy. It's going to be challenged because we are maybe tempted to make a few more special dishes that we might have time to try, but we can eat well and we have opportunities and eating well can really help our immunity and can also help us manage this mentally and emotionally. Moving, keeping ourselves moving, you know, it's not running marathons, we're not able to go to the gym, but doing things that we can do. I thought to myself, I would never be able to do like an exercise routine at home or at work or anything. Now I have to do that because I don't have a gym to go to. It's harder sometimes to go walking in places that I used to like to walk at, but we can move ourselves. The hydration is very important. The cat too analogy, you know, keeping ourselves hydrating and then sleeping. Not that we oversleep, but getting that adequate sleep, especially the way our bodies are affected by a lot of this stress and unknown that we we want to make sure we get that sleep wake cycle that really works for us. And then loving our body, being okay. And the cats, you know, they take care of their body. We have to, you know, taking care of our body and being okay. You know, if we do gain a three or four pounds or in this situation, that's okay. It's going to be that we are taking care of ourselves and we're ready and we keep repeating this. So again, a lot of the different physical dimensions. I did want to highlight highlight rest is another thing taking a time to just rest or do restful activities some of the things you guys talked about were types of activities that i think would be in the category of rest doing restful activities taking that rest and again the cats they rest a lot i know these cats were so interesting these two cats that would sunbathe by the window some days i'd come in or wherever they were roaming around the house they were doing these things and, you know, they seemed quite content. And I don't even know if they liked me coming in there. I think they liked that I came to change the water and change the litter or gave them the food, but they were quite content. And they seemed to rest a lot or seemed to have a good rhythm with things. And that brings my point to this other point of that we want to think about our body clock related to our physical wellness how are we regulating our body clock? And uh, we got really thrown off perhaps, but I think if we think about our body clocks and we think about doing things in the time and everybody's body clock is a little different, but doing things at the time that your body works, like some people say I'm a night better or I work better during the day or I'm better at noon. Think about your body clock and how it works with your sleep and wake and eating and your energy level. And I encourage you to think through making sure we can kind of work out your routines to be doing things at times that are best using your peak performance in terms of your body clock and doing things especially related to our sleep and wake cycle. So it's a really important concept that relates to a lot of the physical activities that many of you mentioned that or things you might want to consider doing. Um, stretching or moving so it's about we're about 20 minutes in almost and i think you know just kind of get up and stretch get up and move our body from time to time like just getting up i do i'm just like got notes on my page like those little notes that were on the front that just looked like my desk i have my notes telling me to get up and stretch at certain points stop and do some yoga at this point moving our body at intervals especially if those of us working from home sitting in front of the computer, taking time to get up and stress. Many people are talking about um, doing Zumba, doing yoga, doing things like that on the computer really do work well. I never thought I could use them. I always like a class for those things, but I had to adapt and it's working well to try to use those kind of videos things. And people are doing it together. Another thing between, besides just moving and stretching is, um, taking time to breathe, you know, taking time to just move, you know, get outside, take a breath or get up from your computer, get up from what you're doing and just taking a breathing and doing the time to pause and breathe in a way that we can just kind of reset ourselves. And again, that's something I'm finding is very important with a lot of things happening and a lot of things changing. You want to get it done. You want to get it done. You want to get it done. I find just taking myself away from it 
pausing, focusing a little on my breath, maybe doing a one or two or three minute short little meditation of breathing helps. So how do you do that and build that into your routine? Or how do you have an activity that actually involves helping you to pause and breathe? Some of the rest activities that some folks do may build that in. So that's really important. Um, so again, the pausing, taking that time to pause, you might not be able to go out on a park, but maybe in your yard, you have a place, in your house, you have a place, and then to breathe and just looking at the sun and start, I mean, being grateful the sun is shining, we have the nice, um, you know, weather to be looking at and just taking time to do things to just pause and breathe. Just want to check in with people, are folks able to do things that they can unplug and pause and breathe. We want to see if anyone has any thing that they do or they a suggestion that they've done that's worked for them. Maybe we can check into the post if anyone wants to share something that's worked around pausing and breathing through time that they're doing it or activities that helps you with that. We have um, meditation helps with the pausing, um, having a welcoming prayer meditation. I light candles and take the time to pause and meditate. Yeah. Yoga, meditation. I do go outside. Mindfulness breathing in my backyard under the sun and bird watching. Oh, that's great. Yeah. Those activities, those things getting in nature takes into a lot of the dimensions and really doable things. We can do them very, very important. And, you know, um, probably many of you have more things we'd love to hear as we go. Yeah, taking that time for then our spiritual and emotional wellness. I know I'm going kind of quickly because I have a lot of things, but I wanted to try to touch on many of the dimensions as possible. For spiritual and emotional um, wellness, many people are talking lots about, and I have a, a handout and resource that I'm going to, we're going to link you to. Uh, our Words of Wellness has been trying to cover strategies that people are sharing and resources that we've been able to share. The journaling and types of journaling has been helpful for a lot of people right now, using creative types of journaling, but or also do gratitude journaling. People are you know, finding that to be use, useful, as well as people's creative juices are really turning with this opportunity, people getting back to making things, doing things, listening to music. Music's a big thing that's been helpful. And we see a lot of the um, performers doing that live from their house, you know, doing performances just to help people to, music soothes our soul. And, and we really need that at this kind of a time. Attending virtual symphonies, there's something about that in the word from wellness. There's also the mindfulness. And people are like organizing playlists that are important, things like that. You could do that. You could add those things in as well as just hobbies, different kinds of hobbies that you may have had or you might want to try or some kinds of things that we're hearing that people are doing and they're all possible to do at this time. The next thing that I, well, I, this was a slide I put together because I think like between spiritual, emotional, it could affect a bunch of the dimensions, but one of the things, I'm not the best today, but I got my flower in the background. It's a beautiful flower I took when I was in the island of Madeira in Portugal many years ago. It's a great flower that it keeps me, you know, trying to keep me bright and, you know, colors, is getting dressed up. Like we might just be, I'm a little dressing down a lot, but I've been forcing myself to try to think about getting dressed up, getting up, you know, getting a little more dressed up, even though we don't need to go to the office or this, but just changes your perception of things, of like how I see myself, like just putting on a little bit of extra time to fix our hair or brush our hair or put on something. It's a thing that could do, and it does affect our mood a bit. And it's something to just be mindful of because I think sometimes when we can get into that habit of too many days wearing too much lounge around clothes or things, it sometimes starts to affect some people tell me their self-image and self-esteem. So just getting yourself dressed up a little bit, just thinking about that maybe one time, especially if you need to pick up your spirits or want to just keep yourself into that routine of what um, you normally do is something that has been helpful for a few people have shared. The other one that this is one that I really want to work on a lot, and a lot of us might have an opportunity, is our environmental wellness. So there's a lot of aspects of environmental wellness. We have plenty of opportunity now to do the cleaning that we said we couldn't do. Me, I'm, that's what I've been trying to do. Not that I have much of a house to, or apartment to clean, but 
it's an opportunity to just kind of clean up, tidy up, and get our environment because it does affect our mood and our emotions a lot of times when you have like too much clutter or things are starting to pile up. So just taking that time and planning it. And if you have a big job to do, just do a corner. We're working with some people on just doing corners of rooms or corners of the kitchen, just taking up in a, in a, in a graded way that you can just manage it, but just taking that time internal, the inside cleaning. And then also some people are talking about um, external, doing things in the yard, environmental wellness in our yard, or just getting out into the yard and being able to be, um, you know, in their yard, cleaning around, planting, watching the, the plants and the nice flowers that are coming up right now. But the environmental wellness, just to think about it, because we are in the, the places and spaces you're going to be occupying a lot more. You want to make them spaces and places that are comfortable for you that don't stress you out, that have things in them. I'm even finding in the, where I'm working remotely, trying to put the office, more things in the office that are just brighten my days up at certain times or things that are um, getting rid of piles of things and things, you know, to just try to be not so overwhelmed, but be in an environment that's more positive. So think about the environment you're in a lot now and finding ways to either clean them up or fill them with things that are going to more be positive and bright for you rather than um, maybe make you feel bad or sad or kind of stress you out. Um, again, with the cleaning projects, take baby steps with that. If you're doing a decluttering project, do baby steps with that. Room by room, table by tables, pile by pile. Each pile will be one, you know, if you're shredding things, you just go pile by pile. But it really does help and it gives you this opportunity if you have time. Social wellness is a huge one. And I think the things that NAMI's been doing has been amazing. I've heard some people who've been participating in some of the support groups, even on the weekends. Amazing, important resource to have for people to keep connected at this time, especially people who will feel disconnected, whether they have people around them or they don't. We need that connection. So we want to try to be connecting with each other, but we also want to be able to be compassionate towards each other, positive towards each other, because we are under stress um, right now. And many times maybe our complaining or our, you know, angst about something starts to take over the conversation. So it's important to be kind of mindful of that and try to support one another with more positive, you know, help problem solve things together, but also be more um, you know, accepting of each other and be helping one another to be focusing more around our wellness. What are we doing? What can be an uplifting thought? Sharing uplifting funny stories or photos, just trying to connect. And I'm hearing also more and more people are connecting with people they hadn't talked to or connected with a long time. And people are rebuilding in certain ways and using the virtual uh, technology to really help bridge that, which um, people are really surprised that they haven't talked to someone, a family member for a long time, or friends. It's really helping us to even connect more. But again, it's a thing that we can continue. And thank you for being on this um, webinar today. It's another way of just connecting with other people you may even get to meet through this. And being kind, kind to ourselves through this time, because there's a lot of stress on all of us, and then kind to others. This is a really important thing. And if we have the ability to help deliver a meal to a neighbor or help someone who might not have, um, you know, be having a challenging time where we can do some, you know, positive distancing with people, like trying to do that reaching out a little bit more is helpful because it helps us and it helps that other person, especially if people do not have someone. So. Um, you know, or have limited social networks that can help them. But I think the kindness is something I'm really thinking is going to help all of us at this point is being kinder to ourselves in the way we use our, you know, attitude, our self-talk and how we um, view ourselves, you know, our expectations and then how we're interacting with other people. Just being kind and doing more with social wellness that really is a little different right now, but it's still possible. So, um, I'd love to hear, you know, when we go into some question and answers, what people are doing and other kinds of things that people um, may want to share. Um, the um, intellectual wellness is one that's really, I think, 
been helped a lot in this situation is because we are learning new things. I mean, there's amazing things in some of my work with um, people who did not have anything and fear of technology. Really, they would probably rate themselves really low on being technologically savvy, no even interest. They're actually interested, they're learning, they're using the technology to help connect. So it's like that, you know, we never stop learning. We can't ever stop learning. And so we, um, we just want to keep helping to um, do things that we're learning more. We're doing things with our creative learning. Like I think just um, not only knowledge, but doing things creatively with, we think about the intellectual wellness dimension, we can be, um, making things, doing things, playing games, learning, learning games. The, the last edition of the Words of Wellness, we have a lot of stuff that taps into the intellectual wellness um, area. So I encourage you to look at that and love to hear some more of the things other folks are doing. But we also want to remind ourselves about intellectual wellness is to be careful consuming too much news that comes about, you know, because we have this great technology. Some people are very stressed by the consumption of news. So some people have to really, um, um, like you take a certain dose of medication, perhaps, to manage a medical or mental health challenge. We might have to take a certain dose of news in that we tell ourselves. And I, do, I did that for myself a long time ago, and I have to keep still um, watching how much I look into, think, watching the news feeds and stuff, because it does get you down and sometimes frustrates you. And sometimes you don't even know if what you're reading is so true, but then we act on it or we change our attitude about it and it doesn't help. So being mindful of the dose of news that comes in for you and engaging yourself in positive activities that you can do intellectual wellness wise. Um, I'd like to see, um, uh, well, we see like games, people are getting the old games out, you know, games that people have in their closet, pulling them out. I know these probably games that a lot of younger people probably never heard of, but games are at really um, big these days, card games, um, and also, um, you know, um, just many things. But I'd like to hear what are folks doing for intellectual wellness? That would be interesting to hear right now. If, what, if anyone wants to share what you're doing for your intellectual wellness. Okay, we have um, words with friends, family game night, paint by number or candy crush, candy crush jelly, um, categories uh, via Zoom with friends the other night, um, digging into the pile of to be read books. That's great. Mm -hmm. um, playing games. My family and I play cards, Uno, Scrabble, reading, catching up on all the reading I haven't gotten to before. Um, my um, girlfriends and I decided on a book club, trying to learn a new language, mm -hmm. catching up on reading, family gatherings via Zoom, puzzles, trivia, crossword, taking a course, taking an online quilting class, wow. hangman puzzles and podcasts. Wow, so a lot of intellectual wellness. They, you see how some of those other things kind of, they affect the social dimension and potentially even spiritual dimension. They kind of, a lot of activities will cross dimensions, but excellent activities. I think everyone shared, and I think many more of you probably are doing things as well. And I think um, just finding ways to keep using our mind and um, being able to like um, expand that into learning about how we can take better care of ourselves, how we can continue to do the things for our wellness. Being on these kind of series that NAMI's offering is part of your intellectual wellness, building your knowledge base around different topics that are gonna help you currently and they'll help you in the future all wonderful ways and i one of the things i think that's so important with um what with learning and you know sharing our knowledge is part of our recovery is sharing things with others and i heard a lot of that in many of the examples and i think that that's another big important piece that we can think about in terms of how we um think about um, you know what you are doing and what you can do despite this crisis despite this significant distress that it's perhaps causing for many, many people, we can and do things and we can continue to build on them. Um, so um, the other areas that we think about with the dimensions, you know, the occupational, the financial, 
and um, dimensions. Those are other areas too that are affected as well for people that are probably going to be impacted occupationally, maybe work is impacted for people or um, the um, financial dimension, probably um, many people, if they're not working or you know just financially things, can be impacted and those are things that perhaps now are impacted but also in the future we may see more impacted so we'll even think about i didn't want to go into too much detail on that today but maybe in the future it might be something for you to think about because there are things you can do occupationally keeping ourselves involved in our day-to-day -day life and taking care of our family members that becomes the occupational role for many people um, and doing work through role perhaps, but also family, taking care of our families, that's gone in overdrive, helping to take care of our families. So occupationally we are doing things if we may be doing a little bit less at work, um, as well as financially, I'm finding myself spending lots less money because I have not a lot of places to spend it in a sense, not good in some ways, but you know, it's, you can, can keep into a budget in a sense, or start to maybe think about budgeting more if, if financially wellness is something that um, is starting to be a stress or strain from you. Um, so um, those are two other dimensions. I didn't have too much I wanted to go over because I didn't want to overload the presentation and I want to get to some questions and answers. So again, the ABCs of the model, keep that model, that attitude, keeping involved in the different activities in many of the dimensions. Like I said, I didn't go over every single one, but I did go through the majority. What are those activities you're already doing? Maybe you've got some new ideas today or some of this thing about your intellectual dimension, some of the things that you learned today or some of the resources I'll link or things you can go and try to see if they could be helped. And then just having that sense of control and having doing things that we have control over and knowing that and really having still choices because we do have a lot of choices to manage this situation as evidenced by all of the things that you guys said so far. So um, let's see if there's any questions before I move to another um, question, uh, a chat question. Were there any other questions, um, Meredith, that anyone posted? Sure. Um, one of the questions was, do you know of any beginning yoga videos or online resources for yoga? Yes. Um, I did the the newsletter the the two newsletters that we sent there was two videos in there one was um, and um, if they need a real basic one they can send me an email I have a whole nother list I had in that list only about two or three listed but um they can check them out and see or they can contact um, but there are some real if you need just a basic one the one um, some of the one that I put in there sort of are basic but there's even more basic if that's what they need. But yeah, great videos. You have to look around online, but there are some good ones that um, do do well, you know, that um, they spell it out um, pretty simple. Okay, there's another one. Um, can you recommend something like a 12-step group for mental health on Zoom or any online resources for that? Yeah, um, also in, uh, um, also in the um, that newsletter, we had a whole listing of the different um, programs that are on. Um, like there's the different, like I know Hearing Voices Network has gone, almost all of the um, the groups have gone online. So um, the, the, uh, there is a list at the, this, the, the newsletter that was April, the April newsletter, there is a list at the back. If it doesn't meet the person's need, send an email because we have we've been keeping track of listing and I only put like a subset in there but they can just send me an email and if it doesn't meet their needs and I'll forward some more that we have gathered but right. I think like, you, NAMI has groups too you might want to mention those the one that absolutely uh, thank you thank you Peggy yes um, NAMI New Jersey is doing online support groups um, connection and family support group um, you can go to our website. They, we have now three um, three support groups a week, um, two during like the lunchtime hours, and then the rest are at night, usually around seven o'clock. So if you go to NAMINJ.org, um, and we have a list of all of our um, webinars and upcoming groups that um, that we'll be having. Um, and I do. There's been a lot of questions about if people will have access to the presentation after the conclusion of this. Um, so on our website also, we will have, um, once we um, 
record this um, and put it together. We'll put it on our website so you can watch it again. Um, in addition, with that, we will be posting the um, the newsletters that um, that um, Peggy has um, put together, the words of wellness, as well as um, some of the other activities that she has mentioned here today. So, oh, great. So, good questions. I, and yeah, we'll have that available. And um, on a regular basis, we usually do words of wellness once a month, but we're moving to a twice a month process right now just to make things available to people more, um, you know, because of just what's going on now, having people are finding it's helpful. There's also another link I'll send to you. I work, I work a little bit with University of Illinois Chicago with Dr. Judith Cook, and we um, have a repository of resources there that you might want to look at. There's um, a lot of wellness thing, and there's a lot of self-directed care type programs. So we'll make sure um, we'll make sure that that's available to you too. And we just updated it that we organized it with um, COVID-related resources. So it's at the University of Illinois Chicago Health Solutions Suite, and we'll. Um, We'll, we'll try to make that available too, because there's a lot of good resources up there. Um, I'd like to see um, what, from basically what you heard today, was there anything new that you think you might do today or in the next few days, basically from different than what you're already doing? Is there something new that was mentioned or um, maybe by what we talked about inspired a new thought for you? Was there something new? We'd just like to hear from um, you guys, what would you think you might do new either today or in the next few days? So we have um, podcasts. Another suggestion from before was reading about starting a business. Um, let me see. Environmental wellness was new to me. Mm -hmm. Adding rocks to my flower bed that were delivered today waiting for me. I like the idea of dressing up. Um, get up and stress, dressing up again. I look into the eating well and restoring my balance, breathing and the ABC model. The ABC was a very important concept. Engage in more physical activity, again, more with dressing up, um, increasing physical activity. And I have to say also the, the idea of dressing up is, is a good one. Um, yeah. Engage in more physical activity and stretching. Hold, put up more family and friends photos in my office start moving more, um, environmental wellness, baby steps, increasing physical activity, the virtual book club, journaling, a lot of great ideas. Great. Yeah. So people have new ideas and just kind of try them out. Um, great. Very good. Um, okay. Um, and we did want to know um, what would be helpful just um, if there is anything else that you felt that would be um, like what you didn't hear today that you'd like to learn. Um, what was something um, that would be about how to work wellness during crisis? Was there something else more that we could have covered or that maybe um, NAMI could help hold a workshop about or a um, webinar online that would be helpful for you? If we you want to chat, chat that in for a few minutes, just to kind of see what their other kinds of things would be helpful about how to um, have wellness during this crisis. Yeah. So one um, comment is, I am more worried about the wellness during crisis for low social economic status people, such as people with chronic medical conditions, people in nursing homes. Um, the crisis impacts them more. How can we promote wellness during crisis in dealing with social determinants of health? Yeah, so again, it's like helping people to educate people to keep themselves well, maybe needing to help them to get access to, um, you know, if they are um, needing to fill out the food stamp um, paperwork again. This is where a lot of peer support can come in um, around that. At, at Collaborative Support Programs in New Jersey, I know they're doing some work with that through the wellness center. So if you have a wellness center in your area, maybe call them because maybe there could be a peer supporter to help walk you through those or link people to those kind of resources. But definitely people who are um, perhaps you know, impacted medically we want to be checking on them more or reaching out to them or linking them um, if they don't already have some, some kind of a treatment or support services, linking them. Most people may have it already, but then they just can't get to it. That's where a lot of peer support could come in 
and I'm linking them to the support group. The NAMI support groups might be good because I know there's a lot of good problem solving that goes on in those support groups and they have a lot of good facilitation that does know about a lot of these um, resources that exist. So um, I think definitely reaching out to them one person at a time, but then as a, uh, or learning how to um, use like the resources like the centers or the NAMI support groups would be the two off the top of my head. I probably have a lot more ideas, but um, I think it's a good topic for a future uh, webinar for sure, the, particularly the medical and the social determinants definitely could be another topic down the road for a webinar. That's great. Um, there was also a question or comment. Um, we can't forget boundaries even during this time. Um, do you have a comment on that, Peggy? Absolutely. The routine. You have your morning, you have your afternoon, you have your evening, you have your activities. The balance, that goes back to the balance. Trying to make sure we know when we need to cut off from work or cut off from the social contact that's breaking us down. So like if we are, it's having that balance and that boundaries, knowing when too much is enough, that we can't keep talking on the phone to the, the fifth person for the day. You just have to maybe text the person and tell them, I'll talk to you tomorrow morning. Having those, knowing when you, you know, what your time's going back to the circadian rhythm, when are the times best for your energy? When are the times you need your rest and relaxation? And giving yourself a break that way. And being okay that you're not, um, you know, making someone mad or disappointing someone. It's self-care. So being mindful that it's more about self-care and just creating our routine and then letting other people know, like, I can get to that task tomorrow. Tonight I need to take my walk, have my dinner, have my sleep, you know, letting people know that. That's great. Um, so some examples for other topics um, are maybe examples on strategies in details about the ABC model, like going into specific examples more. Um, maybe something towards parents with young children at home and homeschooling. Um, meditation and yoga, um, strategies to build these ideas into daily life and how to stick with them. Yeah. Um, how to deal with others, especially since you are stuck inside for so long with other people and how to improve your relationships and those boundaries. And I think you gave some really good examples on how to, to set those boundaries. Yeah. How to deal with older parents who don't understand how severe coronavirus can be. Um, and there's one, a great suggestion to help your own self-care while helping others and some of the examples you gave, Peggy, um, to help seniors and nursing home residents have your children write notes, letters, or draw pictures and send cards to the nursing home. Yeah, great ideas. Those are great ideas because um, they're doing things and then we're helping someone else and we're helping ourselves at the same time. That's great. Um, a comment, um, this webinar is helpful for college students who are adjusting to having to do their work online and missing social activities. Yeah. Yeah, that's um, the suggestion is to do a webinar specifically for consumers who are in residential programs and isolated because of the fears of the virus. Yeah. Yeah. Great, great. Um, how can, I'm sorry, how can we build our immunity, different types of things to do? Yeah, sleep, sleep and rest incredibly going back to the circadian rhythm there's a whole bunch of things coming out about that right now is building your sleep getting those sleep habits as well as just really watching your um keeping ourselves active physically active not marathons but physical movement as well as you know watching sort of our our intake of food like we you know we might be eating a little more foods that we may not but making sure we keep that healthy food because Think about when you become more susceptible to a cold or something, it's a lot of times when we are sleep soft, we're not, we're eating a little bit out of our unhealthy ranges and we're not doing a lot with our body. So it's trying to build your immunity that way, as well as washing our hands and doing the physical distancing with the, you know, precautions that have been put out by the CDC and things. Those are all things we can do to keep our immune system strong. And social support helps your immunity, having social connections. So that's why the social groups, the social connections is an important thing for immunity. There is a lot of good research showing that social connections definitely helps with immune system functioning. 
That's amazing. Um, and that's a great segue. There's another comment that said, I've observed that having friends drive up to your driveway and chat with you from their car or vice versa, or do a drive-by birthday celebration with honking and signs have been tremendously helpful. Also doing Zoom parties with friends is a tremendous booster. Yeah, yeah, great things. I think everyone's doing, like it's just great to hear it. And you can see we can have wellness during crisis. You can focus on the dimensions. We didn't go into all of the detail just for an hour, wanted to not overwhelm everybody. And it was just so grateful, great to hear the feedback because your feedback really is like hearing, is this working? How is it working? And you learn from each other from this. So we definitely want to, um, I want to thank the opportunity to present about the wellness and the eight dimensions and the wellness model. And I'm happy to share any of these other resources and um, I want to thank, um, you know, Nami for inviting me to participate with you guys today. And I hope everyone has a great um, rest of the Wednesday and, you know, rest of the week. Great. Thank you so much, Peggy. And thank you um, for taking the time and giving us such wonderful um, tips and, and really great food for thought. So thank you for that. Um, we'd like to close the webinar now. Um, you have, we've been watching the chat and we've been taking notes down about some of your suggestions for future workshops. And um, please come back to NamiNewJersey.org. We are going to have this webinar as well as the resources, the, um, the WOW newsletter that Peggy writes and was speaking about all on the website for you. And we're going to continue to have um, webinars on a regular basis to keep you informed of what's going on and, and some other tips and tricks to keep you and your family um, safe and healthy during this time. So Peggy, thank you so much. It was a amazing, wonderful webinar and I appreciate you, your, your time. Thank you everyone for the, your time and joining us. You have given us a lot of great suggestions and, and I love the, the group share. So have a wonderful day, be well, stay connected and keep uh, connected to NAMI New Jersey for our future support groups and webinars. Take care. Bye-bye.